Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Arizona Coyotes franchise mode here in NHL 22. So in last episode we had the draft and the re-sign stages. We kind of looked to add a little bit more in terms of prospects and also get back all the type of guys we need to have back in order to win a Stanley Cup. Um, but basically a few episodes ago we lost in round one so we are definitely looking to be a Stanley Cup winner this upcoming season. I hope that we get back to that cup final again. I just don't know what the reasoning is why we got eliminated by a Minnesota team who ended up going to the cup finals this year. But I feel like once you lose in the first round to like a bad team, then the year afterwards you end up winning the Stanley Cup. So I really hope that is the case for our team. But anyways, we're up here in free agency looking to add a, maybe a little couple pieces to this team. And uh, also then integrating our youth into our lineup for the upcoming season and simulating a bit to see how our team does so far this year. Hopefully we could get off to a pretty good start right away. Now before we get into our free agent signings, we do have a few comments to go over. So the first one is from Cody Legaspi. He says, I would take a look at Dobson or uh, McIsaac for how cheap they are for their ages. Possibly swap Dobson in for somebody on the samarukov Timmins line as they struggled last season. So, um... Let's take a look at them. I think they're free agents, or maybe they were on the trading block. I'm not sure exactly which one they were on. Yeah, I think they were on the trading block. So let's go to the trading block and take a look and see if they were there. I would assume they were on the trading block since they aren't looking like they're in free agency. But yeah, we might end up uh, swapping up that pairing a little bit because Samarukov and Timmins really struggled last year, but the year before, uh, they were actually pretty good, I'm pretty sure. So it's kind of interesting there. So uh, McIsaac is not there. Where the heck are these guys? Are they free agents or what? I got to search and find where the heck they are. Not find trade. I need to search and find out where the heck they are because I honestly don't know if they're free agents or whatnot. Um, so let's search Dobson... I would assume both of them are in the same area we're over there. Um, so Dobson is a free agent. Okay, never mind. So that means McIsaac probably is as well. So let's go back to the free agent screen. Sorry about this. I honestly didn't know where these guys were. I maybe should have looked at a little bit ahead of time. Um, so let's just sort this by overall. And there's Dobson. Does he fit our defensive core? We don't know. He doesn't actually want that much like uh, Cody is mentioning. Only 1.4 for one year. That's not too bad considering he's 27 and whatnot. So yeah, we could always bring him in and then get rid of one of the two between Sam Rukov and Timmins. Now, Timmins is the one that plays, I believe, on the right side. And Timmins is still signed for a couple years, so it might be hard to move him away. Um, but I'm not 100% sure with that. Um, McIsaac, where is McIsaac? Oh, there he is. 82, and he also wants 1.4. He's more or less as a top six defenseman, which is kind of interesting. We don't know if he fits our system either. I wish I knew if these guys guaranteed fit our defensive core. I feel like McIsaac might be the more interesting of the two just because of the fact that he's listed as a top 6 D. That means we could get away with playing him on that top 6 pairing as well if we wanted to make changes where Tukinen would be in the top 4 and all that stuff. Um, so, which one of these two guys would I rather bring in? Let me just take a look at uh, Timmins and Sam Rukov and see which one is the worst of the two. And maybe that will give me a better decision on which one of those ones we would want to sign if we are to sign anybody. So, Timmins is an 84, Sam Rukov is an 82. So, both the guys that we were just looking at are pretty similar overall wise. Sam Rukov only has one year left, which means that uh, he's going to be demanding probably a lot of money. Yeah, 4.7, that's a little bit of a lot of money and he also wants six years so i feel like sam rukov would probably be the one that we would trade away i mean like he was the plus 19 the year we went to the cup finals and then the year we missed uh or not didn't go to the cup finals he only had uh he was a minus seven he butts up consistently around 20 to seven uh 15 to 20 points and yeah he doesn't really do much in the playoffs which is kind of problematic how about timmons timmons has been averaging a little bit more points it looks like and he was a minus 11, then a minus, or plus 23, then a minus 3. And playoff-wise, he's a better playoff player. Hmm. But he is still minus 1 in the playoffs. Um, Let's see. How good of a fit is he for our team? He's the best fit on the second pairing, which is where we've been playing him. How about Sam Rukov? How good of a fit he is? Wait, wait, let me go between the two of those guys again. Timmons. They're the exact same fit too, but Sam Rukov actually has a green check mark, which means Timmons is probably the one to get dealt away because of that. 
because we want players that could uh, have green check marks and stuff like that where they fit in. So I think we are going to trade away Connor Timmons, which is kind of problematic, but uh, I mean, he's still signed for one more year at 6.1, or two more years at 6.1, and then he'd become a UFA and we'd more than likely lose him considering we have Soders from a chicken. So I think we will try and trade away Timmons. And then we will sign, I believe, maybe the better of the two. Maybe we'll just sign um, Dobson then. So let's go to free agents and sign Noah Dobson. Because I think Noah Dobson, even though um, Nick Isaac solicited is a top four defenseman, I think getting Dobson, since he's the better overall, might be a better thing to do with for our top four. And he doesn't really want that much either. So yeah, we'll sign Dobson. I wasn't going to make a trade involving one of those defensemen, but I think... Changing our defensive core a little bit might help out. So let's give him a one-year deal at 1.8. See if he accepts that. And yeah, we'll try and find an offer quickly for um, for uh, our defenseman. Why can't I remember names now? I'm just so overtired. That kind of uh, Connor Timmon. So let's see if you get any offers. Two third-round picks. That looks like the extent of what we could get. A second and a third from Colorado, but they're a contending team. So we probably want to send him to a team though that's more rebuilding. So one of the ones that are offering for two thirds, which means let's send him all the way to the Eastern Conference and send him to Washington. So best of luck in Washington, Connor Timmons. Sucks to get rid of you, but we are going to be making a little bit of changes just to uh, see if it uh, could help our defensive core out a little bit. So there you go, Timmons is gone, which is a big loss to our team. But at the same time, bringing in Dobson should help out. So that was the one comment, and then the final comment is from Hawksfan88. He says, I would go after Swayman as your starting goalie, so we are also going to send a contract to Jeremy Swayman to be our starting goaltender, and then also we need to find a depth defenseman, and that's all we really need to sign going into next season. So we will give Swayman only a one-year deal, I think, because of the fact we do have Pedersen, who should be able to be in the NHL this upcoming season even, and then we also still have Wallstead, so... I will give him a one-year deal, and we'll just give him, like, $5 million. Eh, maybe a little bit more than $5 million. Because we don't really actually have a lot of cap space. So, when you're at 5.5, should get it done. And I think that's pretty much all we need to sign other than that. And then one depth defenseman. Who are we going to sign as our depth defenseman for the upcoming season? Since we got rid of Nick Bonday. Uh, we will probably, who was the one I was looking at? There was a guy I looked at at the end of last episode, I think. But I don't remember who it was. Let me just sort by role. Because I remember there was somebody that was listed as a depth defender that I was like, okay, maybe that guy would be interesting, but I don't remember who it was. Um, Let's see, Rathbone maybe, he's 28. How about Keen? Keen has no fit. All defensive pairings for Orlov, but he's 35, which means he'll drop off. Don't know on Rathbone. We don't need to bring back Ilya Labushkin. How about Victor Mete? Gerard fits our top six pairing. That's actually kind of good. Actually, no, he's a top four defenseman because it scrolls all the way back up. That's really annoying. I don't know why it scrolls all the way back up. Uh, maybe Robert Haig. Maybe. Connor Clifton was the one, right? Yeah, Connor Clifton could fit into our top four. So, yeah, we're going to sign Connor Clifton as our depth defenseman and just give him what he wants as well. So, we should be able to get all three of those guys, which is good. And also, Clifton and uh, Swayman used to play together in Boston, so they know each other quite while. well. We're getting offered a trade for Sam Rukov, which is kind of funny. But I don't want to be getting rid of Sam Rukov now, considering we just got rid of Timmons. Hopefully got rid of the right guy. Oh, yeah, I also mentioned, uh, I did in last episode, I offered the contracts to some low league guys for the AHL, so that was just one of those guys accepting there. Swayman is accepted, which is good. Clifton accepts, and same with Noah Dobson, which is good. And there's the other low elite, which is good as well, because that gives us more depth in our AHL, even, even though we don't really need that. So let's just take a quick look at what our contracts are like now. We have 11 million in cap space. We have our goaltending tandem of Swayman and Wallstead, or maybe even Swayman and Pedersen. I don't really know. Defensively, we changed in Dobson. For, or, uh, Dobson got rid of Timmons. See if that will change up anything. And then we also brought in Clifton as a depth defenseman. So I think that's pretty good. And hopefully our team can have a good upcoming season. So let's begin the sim to next season and just see how good our team could do to start the year. Hopefully we start off the season 
pretty solid. Like last year, we had a kind of an up and down start, but we actually had a pretty good record out of the gate. I don't want to have too good of a start because they're also going to end up being a first round exit again. So we kind of want to stay kind of maybe closer to 500 in extent, which kind of sounds weird, but a lot of teams are offering for Sam Rukov, which is something I'm not getting rid of, not just yet at least. We will get rid of Sam Rukov at some point because we do have defensemen in the AHL that will eventually grow to being into our NHL lineup. So eventually Sam Rukov will leave this team, but just not yet because he is still a key piece for that top four pairing. I'm just hoping that Tukinen could jump up to that top four eventually and take over his spot because Tukinen is a pretty good defenseman and he was a really high up pick. So I'm hoping for the best out of Tukinen. Okay, let's get our lines set up and... Forte and Clifton is depth, that's fine. We do have a lot of minuses on that bottom six right now, but obviously that's going to go away once we make some line changes. Um, so, let's see what we got here. Um, Zadina up here. Genther, actually I want, I want Genther on the top line I think instead. I think. Hmm. Actually, let's try something different. Try Agostino, Farinacci, and Shelly as the top line. Which is a little bit weird. Well, we're going to move Sadikov into our top six, maybe? Or maybe not. Because Sadikov scored 40 goals last year, so he needs to be on our power play unit. I know that for a fact. Actually, maybe I'll just go back to Shelly and stuff like that for second line. Hmm. I want to make sure our lines work as good as possible. Um... Let's see, Lawrence is a 78 on the face-offs, which I believe, yeah, but is better than Geeky, so Geeky will be moved to the wing. We will play Sadikov still there on his one-time side. Braden Tracy's face-off stats are probably not that great, yeah. So McGillis could play center instead, and Varlamov will be down there as well. So we got a lot of younger guys jumping into the lineup. We'll kind of, actually, yeah, Varlamov and Lawrence are both jumping into the NHL lineup this season. Uh, Chigurh and Soderstrom, Sam Rukov, Dobson. Doesn't look like Dobson's much better of a fit, but it's okay. It's still okay with chemistry. I like that. Uh, Swayman and Wolstead as goalies. Those guys as depth. We need one more depth uh, forward probably, which I do not want it to be Schools because I don't want Schools to get like his growth stunted. But the HL looks pretty good. Alberts could be scratched. That's fine. Ladipov is growing, which is good. Ortmeier is also getting some growth, which is good. Love to see that. And Pedersen should be in the NHL, I think, technically. So I think I'm going to send them Wolstead, which might be problematic. If Pedersen is not playing that good, we will always send him down to the minors. But right now, Wolstead's the worst out of the two goalies. So I'm going to give uh, Pedersen a chance out of the gate to see if he is an NHL-ready goalie yet. And if he's not, we could always send him down to the minors for the season. And see if he gets more growth that way. But Pedersen's going to be the backup to Swayman for this year. And we need to just sign ourselves, I think, a depth forward. Just because I don't want to have uh, only two depth options. So it sucks to put Wallstead in the minors after he's been pretty solid as a backup goalie. But Pedersen's ready, so it makes sense. Let's sign ourselves a, a depth forward if there is still some available, which there probably should be. Yep, there definitely is. Bjorkstrand's still a free agent. Interesting. Um, so we'll sign back up. Who is this Sepolyov guy? Is this guy an RFA still? No, he's a UFA and he's a 23-year-old. Okay, this guy's a low-risk, high-reward player. Interesting that he's still a free agent. Why not? We'll sign him up, give him whatever he wants, and then he could be a depth option for our team. So that is good. Let me quickly check our special teams because I didn't do that yet. And then we will start up the season simulation. So I need to put... I need to take Lawrence off the power play, I think. Yeah, Lawrence is going to be taken off the power play, I believe. Actually, maybe Tracy instead. I need Shelly up here on the top first unit. Actually, Hayton needs to be there. Shelly could be still there. Yiki's going to go down to the second unit. And then we're going to take out Tracy and throw in Sadikov, I think. Yeah, Sadikov is going to be on that first unit. And that's good on that second unit. And then also this is going to go down here. We want to have our power play do as good as possible. Take out Agostino, throw in Sadikov again. Damn, there doesn't seem to be good chemistry on the second unit. 
or four main power play, but it's okay. Penalty kill looks decent enough. I'm not going to really change anything with that. So that is all good and set up. Now we just got to advance a few days and see if we get that depth option. Then we'll call him up to the NHL, and he will be our one of our depth forwards for the season. And I mean, that's not a bad option to have as a 23-year-old depth option. So he has accepted, which is good. Let's call him up. So we got him in the NHL where he should be. Um, there he is. Boom. And that is good to go. We are ready for the upcoming season, and I'm very excited to see what this team could do. Well, it's already just sim right to the regular season, so sim through to preseason. And see how this team does in the preseason, and then we will probably simulate to January the 1st, because I would like to get this upcoming season done as fast as possible again, because we are a team that should be a playoff team. So I probably want to go up to January the 1st, maybe December the 1st instead, just because we are kind of 16 minutes or so into this episode, I think. Okay, so our preseason was pretty good. We did have a couple losses in there, which is good. That means we're not going to have an insane season where we end up... Or, well, not maybe not an insane season, but not a bad season either. Because if we go 7-0 in the preseason, it's a bad omen usually. Okay, let's take a look and see how this team does. So let's go up to November the 1st and just see how we are in this first month of action. We lose our first game 6-4, which is not good. But we bounce back with a shutout. But yeah, Pedersen is struggling for some reason. We could always send him down, and we will call up one or call up uh, Wallstead instead. Was there an injury? No, there wasn't. Okay, good. Off to a pretty solid start so far. Four, one, and one. Eugene Howe has been injured in the minors. We'll go replace player. And there's a couple more losses so far. Two and two in our first month. Not terrible. Not great either. Which is like I said, a good sign because I don't want a simile too good. And then our team is going to be a first round exit. That type of thing. Um, so Agostino's off to a really good start, which is nice to see that top line contributing. Who's in? Uh, whose contract's up for renewal this off season? Barrett Hayton's the big one. Okay, yeah, Hayton's gonna cost us a decent amount. Who nine million dollars? And that's for a guy that's playing like first slash second line center. Yeah, Hayton's gonna be a big one. So I'll need your guys' thoughts on what we should be giving him for in terms of contracts for next season and I didn't want to go trade for asset I was going to see if I could give Verlom off an extension already but I can't and yeah that's good we have a lot of guys locked up long term I hope that we don't lose hate in this offseason but it might end up happening because of our cap situation but hopefully we can get him back because he is a pretty good piece for this team let's go to December the first yeah I think we might be able to get a January the first in this episode just because of how fast it simulates on next gen consoles so Let's get Hal back in there. There you go. That's good. There's a win over Washington. Another game against Washington. We lose 7-5. to So a little bit of an inconsistent start to the season. But like I said, that might be a good thing to have is an inconsistent season. Because you simulate too good, you end up being like a first round exit. You simulate too bad, obviously you don't make the playoffs. So... Uh, Bykov has been injured in the minors. So the AHL has been slapped with injuries here early on. And last a little bit, 11, 4, and 3. Okay, we are doing pretty good now. We are now still in a wild card spot, which is interesting, but we have do, we do have the least amount of games played in our division. And Agostino is still off to a really good start. 23 points in his first 18 games. And yeah, let's do one more month. And then we'll take a look at team stats and player stats. And then I'll also take a look at trading block and all that type of thing, just in case we want to make trades or not. But yeah, hopefully this team can continue the way we're playing right now. And hopefully uh, that top six and stuff like that could continue to do good. So Bykov is back, which is good. Bykov is one of our top six four prospects, I believe, that just got into the AHL this season. So excited to see if he could get some good growth this year. Because maybe he'll be one of those guys that get into our bottom six at some point. Unless we decide to trade him away, because we might have to trade away some prospects in order to be competitive at some point too. Yeah, we're being very inconsistent. We're losing a lot of games in a row, but then we're also winning a lot of games in a row. We do still have way more wins than losses, which is good, but maybe that's a good thing, like I was saying. Final few games of the month, no, that was an injury. There's another win, there's another win, and another win. So we're 22-8-4, and four, so a fantastic start to the year, and we are second best in our division, only behind the Winnipeg Jets. But we do have a game in hand as well, which is good. And Agostino is still playing really good, which is what I like to see, considering I have him locked up for like seven seasons, 37 points in 34 games. 
Love to see that. We are one of the top teams in the league as well at this moment. So let's take a look at our team stats and player stats so far on the season. And then I'll take a look at the trading block in case you guys think we should be making trades. But I honestly don't know if we should. But then again, last year I didn't make any trades and our team ended up uh, getting knocked out in the first round. So maybe we have to make it a trade to be an actual cup contender. So goals for per game wise, we are the third best offensive team in the league currently. Goals against per game wise, we are currently the second best defensive team in the NHL. So looking good on both ends, which is what I like to see. Power play percentage wise, we are top 10 maybe? Nope, top 15 at least. Not too bad, 20%. And our penalty kill is also probably top 15, I think. Yeah, 82.6%. So not too bad in terms of everything. Obviously, 5-on-5 five five were better than special team-wise, I think, but it's still good. We have no shorthanded goals this year, which might be because we don't have Shelly on the penalty kill. I could always throw him in on the penalty kill if we want to. And we're 8-1-1 one one in our last 10 games, which is pretty good. And both home and away records look pretty good. Okay, let's take a look at those player stats just to see who's been doing what so far for us this season. So, starting off with our centers, John Farinacci's got 31 points in 34 games. Really like to see that, considering we just locked him up to a six-year contract. Uh, Barrett Hayden, 25 points in 34 games in maybe his last year here. Hopefully not. Uh, Connor Geeky's been actually pretty good this year. 21 points in 34 games. So, um, if we do lose Hayton, Geeky could become our second line center, which is not a bad option. So, because Geeky's still playing, I believe, on the third line. Left wing wise, Agostino has been killing it. 37 points in his first 34 games. Definitely off to a career year, probably. Love to see that. Zadina's got 31 points. He's been good this year, which is something he doesn't normally do during the regular season. Normally, he's more of a playoff player. I still don't really like his contract, so if we need to, we might have to get rid of him in the offseason to free up cap space. Genther, 27 points, so Genther's having a breakout year as well, which is good. He still has two years left on you know, on his contract, but he's finally starting to click this year. I don't know if it's because he's not playing with Shelly, because now he's actually able to get goals, but hopefully he keeps that up all year round. Lawrence, 19 points in his first season, oh, first full season at least. He was with us a few years ago when we brought him in from Tampa Bay. But then we played him two years in the minors, and it seems like it's paid off a bit. Could be because he's on the power play as well. Verlamov's got 12 points in 34 games. Not bad from this rookie either. like to see that. McGill's 9 points, and Tracy 8 points. Also, McGill's is technically a rookie, but he did play a bit in the playoffs last year. McGill's is taking a lot of penalty minutes because he's a grinder, but it is what it is. Right wing wise, Calvin Shelley has been amazing again so far. 31 points in his first 34 games. He's already got 21 goals in 34 games. Looking like he's going to hit another 40 goal season easily. And yeah, I'm loving this guy still. Scoring a lot of goals over his career and his shooting percentage is absolutely nuts. He's got a ton of game winning goals already. A lot of power play goals as well. Love to see that. He's still listed as a third line scoring forward, but he's up to an 88 overall because of statistical growth. Which makes our contract look amazing. 8 by 7.2 Definitely worth it for him. Sadikov is off to a bit of a slower start than last year. I don't know what the reasoning is. But he's got 10 goals, 8 assists for 18 points. Maybe we need to move him down to the second power play unit. Because maybe Shelley's scoring more of the goals. So maybe I'll do that. Uh, defensively, Soderstrom has been good. Chikrin has been good as well. Dobson has been really good. So thanks uh, to Cody for that suggestion to bring him in. 19 points in 34 games. Definitely doing a lot better than uh, Timmons would be for offense and defensively right now. He's shooting 14%, uh, which is really nuts for a defenseman right now. Schneider, 8 assists. Sam Rukov, 7 points. And Tukin has been pretty quiet, but his plus minus has been good. He's up to an 81 as well. Love to see that. And then goalie-wise, Swayman's been fantastic so far. And our rookie goalie in Stefan Pedersen has been pretty good as well for the most part. He's not been that bad. Right behind Swayman. He doesn't have any X-Factors, but this guy's been pretty solid for the most part. Hopefully he gets a little bit more starts in the second half of the season. So there you go. There's our player stats, and I think so far our team is looking really good. We do not have... We only have one minus player, and he's a minus one. And a lot of these players on this team have a lot of points, which is also good. Like, most of these guys are up above 20 points, which is good. Let me just take a look at the entire league just because I'm curious if anybody's leading in any categories for us. Nobody's leading in points. Anybody leading in goals. 
Shelly is up there in goals, but he has a long way to go because Matt Mishkov has 27 goals in his first 36 games. So, um, yeah, it's going to be hard for Shelly to win a Richard, but at some point, hopefully, he could do that. That would be nice. Defensive points, Kale McCarr is leading in Colorado. Interesting. Goalie-wise, Elvis in wins so far. Best rookie so far is Danielson in the Rangers. But we have a lot of rookies in our lineup that hopefully they could get a chance to win the Calder as well. So that is that. Let's take a look at what is out there on the trading block. And then that will be it for this episode, I think. I just want to quickly see what's out there just in case we want to make trades. But I honestly don't know if it's necessary because we do still have like Schools and the Miners we could call up if we need to make changes. But anyways, there's Ruotsalainen and Kreider in Anaheim on the block. Shea, D'Angelo, Simic, Orlov, and Brown in Boston. So a lot of defensemen. Justin Holes on the block and some prospects. Shane Bowers, Cameron Hillis, and more prospects in Calgary. A lot of prospects in Carolina. Chicago's got Middlestad, but signed for four years. Verhage, only signed for one year, which is interesting, but I don't have anywhere I would slot in an 86 center. How good is his faceoff numbers? 75 only? Eh. Alex Tuck is also there, but four years left. Kubalik with one year left, and Mason Appleton with two years left. Uh, Colorado's just got some prospects. Columbus has got Jake Bean. Zach Wierenski with one year left, which is kind of intriguing, but I don't really have anywhere I would slot him in on our defensive core, but he does potentially fit our defensive core, which is interesting. Hmm, that's interesting. Sabanajad, so five years left. I don't like that. Clayton Keller, I don't want to bring him back. And Montour there with two years left. Dallas has Sagan on one year left. Hints at four years left. Jason Robertson on one year left, but $9 million. Interesting. Miro Heiskanen on two years left. And Philip Peronik has a five-year deal apparently in Dallas. That's kind of nuts. Uh, Vitacek in Detroit and some other prospects. Edmonton just prospects. Florida just prospects as well. LA just prospects. Damn, a lot of teams have just prospects on the block. Same with Minnesota. Montreal's got Will Butcher, but he's dropping off a lot. And he's got $5 million left on his contract for three years. Uh, Pedersen, Lalonde, okay. More prospects. Alexiak, Mitch Marner with five years left is in New Jersey. It's kind of weird. Lilsgren's still there. Uh, Mark Stone on one year left. That's really interesting as well. Doesn't fit our scheme at all though. Uh, Limbaum, Maximov, Entwistle, some guy named Sutton. Truba with two years left. Lourdes, the line in that with one year left. Interesting. Uh, Sam, um, or what the heck, it's not Sam Milano, Sonny Milano. <laughs> uh, interesting. Kerfoot, Aberg. Otto's got more prospects on the block. Philadelphia's got Christian Dvorak. Also, Couturier, Horvat, Garland. So, a couple of former Yotes in Philadelphia and Nick Schmaltz. But all of them have multiple years. Pittsburgh has really nothing, just picks. Same with San Jose. The Kraken have Lindell, Stanley, Fleury, Pilot on one year left. That's kind of intriguing. Does fit our second line as well. Off to a pretty solid start this year. If we wanted to bring in a depth forward, Andre Pilot could be a good, decent option. But then again, we already have like depth forwards, but still that might not be a bad option. And we could send down Poye to the AHL. So maybe bringing Andre Pilot as a depth forward would be an interesting thing. Or we could actually even play him in our lineup if we want to. But I don't know if that's something we have to do or not. Um, Denis Gurionov has low trade value and one year left. 86 overall. Only fits our fourth line. Which obviously I wouldn't play him on the fourth line. Ovechkin with one year left. Is that a little bit over the top to try and trade for Alex Ovechkin? Probably. But that would be interesting. He's still scoring a decent amount of goals and points. We already have a lot of guys that are really good goal scorers, so I wouldn't have anywhere to really put Ovi on the power play and stuff like that. But, hmm, that's really interesting. One year left, 42 years of age. Obviously, he's probably going to retire this year. His trade value is still a little bit high as well, but it would be interesting to put him in our lineup. But I don't really know if there's anywhere we can because we do have Shelly and stuff like that that are scoring goals. So I don't really want to mess with that. Uh, Vancouver, Lekanen, Kukinen. Obey Kabul and some prospects. Olimata and Vatnin. A lot of Finns on the block. This Loshin guy, I don't know who that is. 
uh, Bjork, Rust, Pilstrom, and some other prospects. And that's what is on the block. Hmm. Interesting. Before I forget, let me just throw, quickly change up that power play unit because I think I want to put Sadikov down to the second unit just to give him maybe a better shot at scoring goals. And yeah, hopefully that helps him out a little bit. Does he fit that second unit better? Yeah, he does, I think. No, he doesn't, actually. But I think I'm going to give him a better chance down there just because Shelly's scoring all the goals on this unit. So if he's down there on this unit, maybe he'll score more. But maybe Zadina will take the goals too, I don't know. So there is our subtle little line change that we're going to make for next episode. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Arizona Coyote franchise mode. So in next episode, we will have the rest of the season simulation. We might make a trade if you guys think it's necessary. But once again, it might not be necessary. And yeah, hopefully this team could uh, make it past the first round again. Because that would be nice to get back to like the Stanley Cup finals again. So let me know what you think down below. And I'll see you guys next time.